Okay, I'm going to talk about the keyword this in JavaScript. Now the keyword this is meant to be a reference to the context where a function was called. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's back up a little bit and talk about how functions are connected and how they work. So we have some variables declared here. I've got box, log, my func, my func2. All four declared as variables. Box is pointing to the div with the class box, so I've got a reference to a piece of HTML. Log is pointing to a built-in method for logging out messages to the console. My func, my func2 are just functions. Now this is a old standard function. This is a function expression. And this one is one of the new ES6 arrow functions. And these will treat the keyword this in different ways. These four variables, box, log, my func, my func2, are declared using something called lexical scope. Basically, where you declare the variables makes a difference. Now, I've done other videos about hoisting and about variable scope, so I know that these are all declared in the global namespace. If I declare a variable inside of here, so let x equal 8, this has got local scope inside the function. It's also got block scope. It's within these curly braces right here is where this variable exists. Now, because I'm currently writing my code and declaring the variables, this is where the variables will exist. It's where I put them when I wrote the code. The keyword this doesn't follow that same lexical scope. Lexical scope has to do is where did you declare the variable inside your code? That determines where it's visible. With the keyword this, it's a word intended to be used inside of functions to denote, all right, who called this function? What's the context? What was context? What was the situation when this function was called? This is a very common example right here. I'm using my variable box pointing to this div and I've attached a mouse down and a mouse up listener. So when I click on this thing, I press down on the mouse, I release the mouse, both these functions are going to be called. Now inside of here, I don't need this x anymore, I'm going to just console log out what the keyword this is. All right, we'll start with just this. Put the number one keyword this, simple enough, jump over to my page, refresh, and a click. This is pointing to box, this div with the class box. That is my variable box. So why is this keyword pointing at this variable? It's because of this syntax right here. My add event listener is listening for the mouse down and it's calling this function. So it's the add event listener that's calling this thing. Well, what was the context? What triggered this to be called? And it's the thing over on the left of add event listener. That is this. Inside of here, it refers to who called this function. Well, really it was box itself that triggered this thing to happen. Box was listening for the mouse down, the mouse down event happened, so box called my function. There, that's this. Now for the second one, when I'm using one of the new ES6 arrow functions, what happens in here? Do I get the same sort of result? Same object, similar event, just calling a different function. The only difference between these two is this is a regular function, this is an arrow function. Jumping back here, I refresh, I press down, there's the first one, I let go of the mouse. Window. The window object is this. When you're using a fat arrow function or an arrow function, what's happening is this no longer gets the context, it gets the lexical scoped version of the keyword this. This looks to its parent and says, okay, where were you declared? You were declared on the global namespace? All right, so the global object is going to be what I point at as well. So this is pointing to the global namespace where this guy was declared. So it's a parent 
and that's with fat hour functions. So it's important to understand the distinction between these two, whether we're talking about an object calling the function or if it's an object calling a fat arrow function. Now, if I call my func directly, so I'm just going to, actually, I don't need to comment those out. We can just run this. There. I run it again, refresh the page again, same thing. Refresh the page again, same thing. Number one. So this one is what I'm calling, number one. But this is no longer box, because I haven't given a context. Now, what if I said myfunk.call? This is a way that you can call a function and provide the context. What object is going to be used for this? So if I said myfunk.call and passed in window, or I said myfunk call and I pass in box. So I'm going to get three of them coming up now for number one. Window, window, and box. If I provided nothing, I'm just calling it. This is going to say, all right, my context is my func right here was called within the global namespace. So within the window object, that's the global object. So this is the global object. If I'm saying myfunk.call and I'm explicitly saying the window is that object, that's what this will be. If I'm calling it with box, box is what this will be. Okay, now we change these to myfunk2, 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 save and rerun this, window, window, window doesn't matter if we call it like this and we pass in the object. This inside of an arrow function always uses the lexical scope. Where was its parent declared? So my func2 was declared the global namespace, so this will always point to that way. So very important distinction between those two. Okay, and uh, so call, we know we can specify. There's also the function apply, function method rather, apply, which will do the exact same thing if we're calling my func with apply, run, there we go, window, window, and box for the third one, because box was sent in as the this object. All right, this points to its context inside of a regular function, this points to the global object, or not always the global object, it points to where its parent was declared, the context for its parent using lexical scope. It's the same thing as declaring any other variable. When you use this, hey, where was its parent declared? Where is this thing being declared? There's a pragma called use strict. With use strict, we lose the same thing here. We lose that. So undefined window and the box. My funk calling here I haven't provided a context. If I use this within a function that's being called from the global namespace, it is basically telling me, hey, there is no context. There was no box object that called this thing. So here I said explicitly it was the window object. Here I said explicitly it was the box. So undefined window box with undefined I just called the function directly. I did not provide a context for where this is happening. And that's what the use strict pragma will do to affect the keyword this. Okay, so we have event listeners. When you use the event listener to call a function, this will point to the object that triggered it. If you're using an arrow function, this will always use the lexical scope. It'll always look to its parent to see where it was declared. So this may sound like it's a, a little bit useless, but if we were to, inside of here, so the mouse up is going to call, here, I'll leave this like this. My mouse up is going to call this function, and this is going to point to the global context. 
and then we have inside of here a set timeout where we can specify that we want to have a function actually we'll just use the shorter version same as everything else log three timed out just to have a message and we'll call it after a quarter of a second there we are and I'm going to copy this up inside of here so I have it in both places so my funk being called comment those out my funk being called on mouse down we'll call this function the context will be box and then we have here a lexical scoped this and that will mean that it looks to its parent to say hey what was this in your context well because I am inside of here this referred to box here it referred to the window object so it will take this from its parent context which was the window object Refresh that, mouse down, there we are. So it worked both times with the initial call for mouse down, it was box, and then inside the set timeout, it was box because in its parent, this referred to the box. I let go, window, window. So because its parent had this set to the window, this is looking to this one to see what were you. Here I have an arrow function, which normally, as we saw before, was pointing to the window object, but it wasn't that it was just pointing to the window object. It was pointing to the context where the parent was declared. So where was this declared? It was declared in the context of the window global object. Because I'm calling my func here, This was box, so this will be box as well. Come back, undefined, undefined. So if this one was undefined, this one's undefined. Down here, I call apply. Box is being passed in as the context for this. Therefore, this will be box. And the one inside points to its parent where this was the box. Okay, so that is with you strict, this in a global function will become undefined. Without it, it will be the global object, which is the window. When you're using add event listener and you're calling it, this will point to the thing that called the event listener. When you're call using call or apply, you're explicitly setting what the this object will point to. And if you have an arrow function inside of a regular function, like we had here, it will look to its parent and say, hey, what was this for you? If it's undefined, it'll be undefined. If it's window, it'll be window. If this is box, this will be box as well. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about what's happening with this and the impact of a fat arrow function on the keyword this and the effect of the use strict pragma on the keyword this. So thanks for watching and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below.